today we've got the Knaus Road 540, which we're going to go through with you for the handover. We'll begin, as we always do, in the cab. And underneath the front passenger seat, you've got your vehicle toolkit. It can be slid out uh, to gain, give you access. Your engine battery is located there and your bonnet release is on the end of the dashboard. With the fuel filling system, the flap's not affected by the central locking. So ignition key in, turn the key anti-clockwise and pop the cap out. You can hang it on the hanger down below, just so. Your ad blue is just below. Uh, that's got a separate indicator which comes up on the dashboard. So with the bonnet release activated, you should just be able to pull up on the yellow tab. Underneath the bonnet, over on the extreme left-hand side, you've got your screen washer point. You've got your radiator and brake fluid reservoirs. There's no power steering reservoir on these. These are electric assist. Oil filler cap, no dipstick, because that's also monitored internally by the electronics. And should you ever need to jump start the vehicle, then there is a access panel next to the headlamp and your positive goes onto there and the negative goes up onto there. So your fresh water filler cap, there's a separate key. Turn the key again anti-clockwise, hose pipe straight in, um, and it fills up a tank which is mounted inside um, this wing. When we come around to the back of the vehicle and we open up the back doors, on the left hand side first off you've got access to your gas bottles. So we've got one gas bottle in here at the moment, this is a propane designed for winter use. You turn the bottle on and off at the brass tap. Adjacent to it is a crash point, so you need to push in on that for about three seconds or so, and that allows the gas then to go through. These can reset themselves um, if you go over a bump in the road, for example. There's towing eyes mounted onto the floor, and later on we'll go through the water systems um, and the electrical systems um, and how they're set up. So we've moved down underneath the bed section at the back, and this is to show you where the fresh water tank is located. So it's located behind this panel over the wing. Uh, for winter storage, you'll want to drain it off. So there's an outer casing that you take off and you'll notice that there's a little green tap down here. At the moment it's in the horizontal position, so it's obviously holding the water in. If I turn it through 90 degrees, then it'll allow then the content of that tank to drain out onto the floor. So what we've done now is moved in underneath the bed section to illustrate where the uh, main systems, battery charger and fuse boards are. We've already connected to the main supplier on the outside, so our RCD switches, which are located here, are already in the up position. Adjacent to that, you've got your battery charger. That's showing a green light, which means that it's charging um, into the leisure battery. Uh, if you have any fuse problems, if you have any electrical problems on the 12 volt system, there's a bank of fuses down here, uh, which you can alter. The rest of it is the diagnostic cables that run uh, through the vehicle. On the passenger side of the vehicle, you've got your toilet cassette. So, magnetic catch just up inside here, which is quite a nice feature. Pull up on the blue tab, and you should be able to slide the whole body of the cassette out. You will have need to have checked to make sure that the lever is shut internally. On a campsite, you have collection points for these to go into. So, blue cap comes off the top. Take it over to your storage area, and then you can dispose of the waste by pressing in the blue button, and that allows then the waste to come out of the base. We're up in the highlands, so we always recommend that you use the green chemical. So a capful or a sachet or a pod mixed with about two litres of water um, to give you a starting balance for the toilet cassette. And you should be able to then slide the whole body of the cassette back in and it locks back into position like so. Lock it for safety. Below that, you've got a wastewater outlet. So this is the grey water that's coming from the shower tray, the kitchen sink and the vanity unit. This lever's in the horizontal position at the moment, which means that the valve is shut. If I rotate it through 90 degrees, that allows you then to discharge the waste over a drain or a gully on a campsite, for example. Just close it back over to stop any escape. On this model, we've got a Truma water heater with both gas and electric. This is the gas exhaust vent. When it's running on gas, you'll look like you notice a bit of a condensation plume on here. A feature of this now, though, is that it has um, a trip sensor on here. So if this window is open to stop any potential monoxide fumes coming back up into the van, it shuts off. Um, so if you ever have problems lighting the water heater, 
double check, just make sure that window is shut. So we've moved inside the van now to demonstrate through the 12 volt control panel. This is located above the sliding door. You have a switch located up on the top right hand side which turns on your 12 volt supply. You'll notice that we've also got the mains light on down here. If you're going to be operating the water pump, use it on demand, select the button below and a separate switch for your interior lights. Over on the left hand side, you've got a series of symbols. We'll start off at the top with the leisure battery and it's showing you what condition the battery's in. You can then move that on to show you the condition of the vehicle battery and your onboard fresh water tank. When your wastewater tank is approaching full, you'll see an indicator light come on um, underneath that final symbol on the top row there. To turn the control panel off, deselect and it will shut the panel down completely. Behind the sink, you've got these 12 volt switches for your interior lights. So they turn on the dining area, bedroom and kitchen sleeping areas, and also the bathroom. Just above that, that's your air temperature sensor for the room heating system. So we're wanting to set up the water system. This is the first time round. So you will turn on the water pump having already filled up your onboard fresh water tank. It's likely when you turn on the cold tap, that you'll get a surge of water coming through. You want to then move it over to the hot water position and you want to make sure that you've got that continuous supply of water coming through. Repeat this in the bathroom as well and that ensures then that you've got all the air locked out of the system. If the system was drained down, it would take about two minutes or so for that to occur. Located underneath the forward facing rear seat is the drain valve, which is thermostatically controlled for the water heater. At the moment, I've got it in the closed position, so it's allowing the water to run through the van, through the heater, and obviously back up to the taps. In the event of the air temperature in this space going below two degrees centigrade, this valve automatically snaps open, and you might hear on the, on the uh, video the water escaping now underneath the vehicle. To reset it, you need to do two things. First of all, you need to turn the tap back to that position, and then behind, where my finger is pointing now, um, there is a raised blue switch. Difficult to film um, because of its position. That needs to be pushed back in and that resets the valve. If you can't get it to reset down here, it's because the air temperature in here is too cold. You might have to run the room heating system for a while to let the valve warm up and then try resetting the water valve. So we want to use the water heating system and the room heating system. Press in on this button here and you'll see these display lights come up on the top. Over on the left hand side you will see this symbol come up when we press in onto it and you can adjust the room thermostat to your desired position all the way up to a maximum of 30 degrees. Uh, we'll put it at a more sensible realistic 19 degrees. Tap in on that one and you'll see that this flame symbol here starts to flash on the top left there that's indicating that the unit's going to kick in and it's going to start warming up the vehicle. When that flame symbol on the top line there becomes solid then it indicates that it's reached that room temperature. All the time it's reminding you what that room temperature setting is. It's a similar story for the water heating system. We've purged the water through so we've got that continuous supply of water. We want to turn it on so you can set it to an eco mode which keeps water up to around about 40 degrees centigrade we can turn it up to 60 degrees, for example, if you want to have a shower. And again, if that starts to flash, then it means it's drawing the water through. This is a CE model, so we have the choice of using it as a gas or electric. If you want it in a pure gas mode, then select that gas bottle um, symbol there at the top, and it will draw through on the gas. If you want to use it on the electric mode, scroll through these two, and you have electric one and electric two. Uh, they're approximately 900 and 1800 watt electric elements, so subject to the amount of amperage that you're going to have available for you to use, and you'll see either one or two spark symbols come up. Or if it's really cold, like we have today at the moment, it's about two degrees outside, we can set it onto the mix one or mix two, and it's using a combination of both the gas and the electric to improve the heat. Doesn't make the vehicle get any hotter, doesn't make the water any hotter, just simply speeds up the process. You can control the speed of the fan as well. It can be set in an eco mode so it's more gentle perhaps for nighttime use. Um, if you're wanting to intensify the speed of the fan then you can do that that way. 
if you turn the water heating off completely and if you turn the room heating off completely you can just use the fan on its own tapping on it oops, and you'll see the vent symbol come up and you can just use it so if it's maybe warmer weather for example you can just use it to recirculate the airflow within the vehicle cancel it turn it off down at the bottom here if you set up your time clock then you can also set this up as a timer so tomorrow morning for example you can set it up so that the water heater comes on at say eight o'clock in the morning or the room heating comes on to your desired uh, settings and you can set it up in that way the rest of the buttons just to do with the um, resetting um, and the controls and settings for the rest of the control just a little note there because we're plugged in onto the mains we've got a little main symbol down here so if you can't see that you won't be able to access the mains applications if you need to turn it off press and hold on this one for a couple of seconds and you'll see the words off come up and it will shut the system down completely we've already turned the gas supply on in the back of the vehicle we've got two isolator taps down here the one at the top is the feed that goes through to the water heating room heating system and the other one goes through to the hob uh, perhaps if you want to isolate the individual supplies then you can do so we normally do that for testing here we'll just turn it to 90 degrees um, and that resets it and turns the gas supply back on. When you change the gas bottle over, I would always advise that you burn some gas off on the hob. So turn on the igniter, you'll see a nice crisp blue flame. Bright sunny day um, against the stainless steel, can be difficult to see the flame. So anybody entering or exiting the vehicle needs to be careful where they place their hands. There's no isolators on these lids, so you need to make sure that this is switched off and cooled down before you draw it back down, otherwise it can cause the glass to shatter. So, located within the van, we've got a 12 volt Dometic fridge, which has got a double door on it, so it can be opened either on the side or on the other. To turn the appliance on, press and hold on the button for a couple of seconds. You should see that Dometic symbol come on. And you'll see a couple of symbols there indicating we've got 12 volts and that it's running on the fridge settings. To thermostatically adjust it, select onto that section there, press it again, and you can increase or decrease the temperature within the fridge. So press onto this one again. We go down to here. We can go up into a user mode, and you can set it into the performance mode, which is where you'd want it to be if you were setting up the fridge. Um, you can put it into a quiet mode um, if you want to use it overnight um, or simply just boost the temperature um, up from one position to the other. Straightforward and easy to use. If you see a little cross symbol coming up in the corner, then it means that the fridge is on. And if you want to switch the whole appliance off, just press and hold on it for another couple of seconds and it should shut down with a little bleep. Up in the back of this cupboard here, you'll have um, a little control pad which you can pull out. And you'll notice that you've got some very funky uh, lamps that you can change colour of. You can fix them onto a fixed setting, or you can choose the setting by sliding your finger around the wheel dial, um, or they can be put into a demo mode where they will just basically contrast and go through the different light sequences that are available. If you want to turn it off altogether, just press the off button at the bottom of the handset, and that will shut those down. So we've moved into the bathroom on the now. The switch for the bathroom is on the uh, panel behind the sink. Uh, if you want to give yourself some privacy, then just push in onto that one and that slides that mirror back across the window. So it opens up a little bit of storage. Your shower comes up out of the sink. Okay, and you can turn it on with the pump as well. There is a hanger above my head for you to use. When you want to make use of the toilet, obviously the seat goes up. On the side of the toilet, there's a lever that you pull across and that opens up the wastegate through. To flush the toilet, it's working off of the pump. So there's a pump switch just there and you'll see some water move around the inside of the toilet. The cassette gets progressively more full, so this gauge will switch over from green to red. The little pull cord is next door, little illustration. Um, it's for basically diverting heat towards the uh, tank and water systems that are underneath the seating unit so you can then obviously um, use it in colder conditions as well pull back on that and it automatically resets and reopens 
little storage panel which you can just open up like so and we've got the buns in there for the shower tray also and there's another little light switch at the bottom for the vanity lights around the side of the sink. In the footwell, you've got a blown-in heating vent, uh, which allows obviously heat to come into this space. And on the ceiling of the bathroom, there's a hanging rail. So if you want to use it as a drying space, um, it's quite useful for wetsuits and towels, etc. So we're going to turn our attention to the uh, forward-facing rear seats, and these have um, a host of features on them. The first one is to give your passengers a little bit more space. Um, if you pull up on a metal spar that's below this handle, you can actually separate the seats and now it's give you a little infill cushion to go in like so. One of the few vans um, that have a proper isofix connection into the back, so you've got the mounting point uh, for car seats and such like. And also on the underneath of these seats, you've got these little studs you can actually position the seat to give you a longer swab if you want to. And with the Velcro attachment, obviously gives you a more reclined position as well. We'll turn our attention to the third bed option that's on this also. This now is fitted with a third bed option. So we've got the floating table at the front here. Lift it up to about 45 degrees and then lower it into the slot below. On the underside, while we've got the table up, you can see that you've got a pull lever, which allows the table to be extended. So we'll swivel that one around all the way to that position. And you'll see that there's a corresponding slot there for the table leg to go into, so that when you hold it down to the 45 degree position, it drops back down onto the floor with that table extension out. There's a second part to the bed frame, which you just bring into position. It's got a hinged panel onto the base. Rotate it through 90 degrees and draw it back towards the sliding door. It should fit nice and neatly into the gap. It's all been CNC'd to fit cleverly into that space. And then you've got two mattress sections which go onto the top. One which has got a little section cut out of it to go around the B pillar. And then a slightly wider cushion to go into the door gap, like so. Push down nice and firmly. And there you go with your transverse bed option at the front. So we've moved ourselves into the cab and we've got cab blinds. So squeeze these little tabs together and draw the blind over. For the central blind, you'll need to make sure that your head up display screen is just gently folded forward, pinch together. And that should then join up magnetically on those. Make sure that they clip back into position for travel. Down on the driver's door, you've got electric mirror adjustments as well as electric windows. And when we turn our attention to the main display, this is an automatic model. So start with your foot on the brake pedal and you should then be able to start the vehicle up accordingly. There's a separate switch which will then draw in the step from outside. Controls for the steering wheel, they include your radio controls and your phone controls, as well as your speed limiter and cruise controls on there. On the back, you've got volume adjustment and also radio frequency adjustment buttons that are located. Your lights are turned on by you turning the bezel switch on the end, so from an off position to um, your dipped headlamps and then pull back for your main beam and then you've got your wiper controls over on this side including a high speed pull back obviously for your rinse controls. With the automatic gearbox if you pull it back into drive mode obviously you'll be able to set off and go down the road but there is the option of it being used in a manual sequential box so you'll move it over you'll see the plus and the minus symbols and you can go up through and you'll get an indicator showing you on the front you what speed you're going into. 
if you want to take it back into the automatic mode just knock the lever back over it goes back into drive and it will sort itself out automatically the drive mode enables you to put in a power and an eco mode as well as a conventional normal mode in the central buttons here you've got a control for your hill descent for your traction control for activating the central locking and a means of heating the mirrors as well usb feeds um, will, can be used here for charging there's a lower usb feed which goes up into the media unit up at the top and there's also a 12 volt circuit feed which is there as well ventilation controls fairly self-explanatory speed of the fan at the bottom and temperature controls the direction of your uh, ventilation going around the vehicle and then you're able to then to draw the airflow in from either outside or we circulate it internally and when you select reverse you'll get an image up on the screen also so that concludes the handover for this 540 road sincerely hope that you got a lot of information out of it this van's going to give you lots of miles and lots of smiles on behalf of Highland Camper Vans thank you very much for watching